Hello, hello. Thank you so much for coming to this Sashiko live streaming. I'm sorry to be late. Um, I think everything is good. Just a second if everything is good. Um, sorry if you hear any um noise, like a vibrating noise. It's my leg heater. Just a second, okay. Okay. All right. So this is the live streaming where I talk about Sashiko while doing the Sashiko stitching. Uh, this is not a lecture, this is not a webinar, it's not a tutorial. So I'm not going to teach or I'm not going to mention about those technical issues about Sashiko. Um, if you have any questions about those technical issues, please check the YouTube channel. My YouTube channel, there are already answers for most, most of that. If you need a personal assistance, uh, please consider taking my workshop. And so that being said, if you could bring some of the stitching material for yourself, that'd be great. We can stitch for one hour or so while talking about Sashiko uh, from cultural perspective. And yeah, that's today's topics. Um, I got some request. At the same time, I brought some of the things, the power of laughter, which is quite positive. At the same time, oh, I don't know what. I would like to talk about today but if you have any question or request for me to talk about um, please write it on the comment section chat section so that I can cover it up yeah um, I'll start stitching I will change the camera uh, let me know if you have the um, audio issues I think it's going okay check yeah should be okay I'll change the Hmm? <laughs> Hari? Why is it not working? Just a second. Come on. Come on, please. Hari? Just a second, okay? The camera is not working. It's not good. It's not good. Where is the camera? <laughs> Just a sec. I'm sorry for this. No? Nothing? Come on! Ah. <sighs> All right, just give me a bit of time to do this. Just a second. I can show myself. I can show myself. I can show myself. That's one good. And the audio is good. I guess it can be so. My camera is not working. Yeah, I'm gonna make a little bit of mess. Sorry about this. Just don't. There we go. It's back. It's back. Just back. I need to make sure that it's upside down. Can I? I think. Yes, there we go. I'm back. Whew. Thank you so much for waiting. Thank you. Thank you so much for waiting. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> Those technologies. I, I gotta replace this computer at some point. It's like six years old. Yeah, it has been six years since I got it. <clears throat> so today is, I brought the topic of um, power of laughter. Um, this is more like my belief. Um, 
<laughs> jump to the conclusion now. Uh, when I I have like a one phrase that it helped me so much when I was in the deep trouble or deep difficulties. And that that was the same from my teacher. I guess that was from my teacher in elementary school, middle school, early middle school, saying that we as human can go through any difficulties as long as we have warm food and a bit of laughter. Uh, life can be, you know, life can be shit, and then it can be difficult. Shit can happen. It can be difficult, and you know, we sometimes lose faith. It can be very, very, you know, miserable. At the same time, we can go through most of those things when we have a bit of love and warm food. Warm food is quite key. Um, ever since I heard that, something stuck in my brain or heart. So I tried to make... Well, I like cooking to, be, to begin with. So I tried to make uh, food for my family and also tried to make them sort of laugh. Not even smile, like out laugh. Like la laugh out loud. It has become my sort of... Not a rules, but something I would like to do every day. So my live streaming used to be, I was focusing on how to make people laugh, especially in Japanese. I was very much trying to make it like a comedy. I still have that wish. I still feel like the laughing is the best medicine we can get. At the same time, I don't like the laugh or joke with sacrificing somebody's feeling. Uh, it's very difficult. It's, you know, I irony is kind of the trade-off or criticism is a trade-off of uh, somebody's pain and love. And I do not mean to um, criticize any comedies in the U.S. or in English. They are funny and, you know, it is just comedy. It's a joke. It's a culture. But at the same time, it's not my preference too much. So I'm trying to come up with some funny things that we can all laugh. Has been a challenge, uh, but um, this morning we had a Japanese gathering and they advised me that I, we shouldn't be laughing while we stitch because we stitch the fingers. It's, it's going to be unstable. Well, that's very true. If you're going to stitch and laugh simultaneously, you may want to kind of stop just moving your hand that's kind of basic advice, but laughing in sashiko can be a very, very, very good medicine for many, many area. So that was the topic. <laughs> that was the topic I was gonna kind of dive into with some. I don't know if I could. I did not. I wasn't sure if I could elaborate, elaborate this conversation, this topic. But that's something I could think of for today. At the same time, I got a little question um, to elaborate some of my phase, phrase I say the lives, not live stream, Instagram, or like from here and there, which I'm gonna just add on right now to the description. If you want me to elaborate about the laughter, puff of laughter, I'm happy to do that. But sometimes it is more the new question, new new topic is easier for me to elaborate. Do you mean by it is too late? <clears throat> so the question was, uh, what do you mean? What do Atushi? What does Atushi mean by saying that um, it is too late? It is too late to share what sashiko is in English. Um, what do you mean by that? What well, like there's nothing too late. Um, so, to answer this question, it is not my phrase to begin with. It is too late is not something I said. I heard first time like four years ago from somebody who has been watching Sashiko Industries the last 30 years or so. And she is non Japanese and she has been seeing pretty much all the 
transition of sashiko and not only sashiko actually the textile industry in japan um you know, dyeing weaving i guess weaving dyeing you know all kinds of textile things she has been seeing that she does speak japanese and while we were talking about look like we we were talking about something quite random it was before COVID for sure because we were seeing somewhere together yes and she said that well it is kind of too late to share that and she did not mean to discourage me or stop encouraging me to uh, stop sh sharing that she did not mean to disappoint me or I don't think there's a, there was any intentions for any of the things I was trying to do but that was more like what is her kind of impression that she had in this case what is too late means that Sashiko's definition in English has been already set uh, we can find those de definitions from Wikipedia um, right now in 2023 the image we can get from the word sashiko is quite fixed uh, some people may imagine the visible mending by hearing the word sashiko some people may imagine the specific patterns um, so those kind of it's not a wrong image but also it's not really the it's it's not explaining the whole picture um, because we cannot really define that word so specifically but because it is already defined so strongly and that's what the that's the answer they wanted to have as the result they do not want to accept other definitions other aspect of this practice as the result it is more challenging it is very difficult for us to implement to introduce what is not introduced and you know she knows this culture she knows how this world goes she knows how weak japanese uh, culture can be in terms of speaking up <clears throat> as the result she said that it is too late it is too late um other Japanese should have would have done that, introducing that, uh, defining sashiko, let's say 20 years ago in 1980, 90, let's say 1990s, when there was still big uh, manufacturer, big big names, big names in sashiko, um, they should have. But translation itself is not a good idea so those definitions we can find about sashiko are not necessarily done by japanese uh, it can be done by somebody else completely some might speak english some, some might speak japanese some might not really speak uh, those definitions are not wrong i keep saying there, there's nothing wrong with that but it's not really explaining the whole picture as the but it, because it has been defined so nicely in form in a form that they would like to get it is very challenging to install something more as a result um the phrase it is too late to share so when i say this word i always try to add more explanation saying like it is too late to share what sashiko is without going through the pain it's not gonna be like saying like well this is sashiko let's enjoy it it's not gonna happen anymore because there's already the information that they think it's the right answer so for those who need the answer for the each stitch's size what i teach is not good enough because i don't define that they, they don't want to hear that there's no right wrong size of stitches because that's a, that's really contradicting to what i what they believe in <clears throat> so it's it is too late to it's going to be very 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 difficult i my this is the kind of personal interpretation but it, it can be impossible to change somebody's mind so 
that's the difficult part of that. But if I if we don't mind going through the pain, then there's nothing too late about. So I hope it makes sense. There is um you can probably find those not argument but those discussions on the Instagram because there are so many people who understand Sashiko as one image that they do not really talk on the same page. And there was I probably talked about that person on the Instagram. He kept saying that Sashiko is the word for the visible mending period. So it is or the people in English like English English speakers can use the word sashiko because the word is free to use uh, to describe what they want in the store. So when he when he wants to communicate that he wants to have something with a visible mending, he can say that I would like to have sashiko deli. <clears throat> As the result, he could get that um, the visible visible mending denim. So there's nothing wrong with that. His theory is there's nothing wrong with his theory. Logic, logic, logic wise, it's it is perfectly fine, right? So anybody can use any word. Sashiko is the word, so anybody can use that. And if everybody has the same understanding of that word, yes, that's very easy to use that word to communicate. Uh, it is tedious to explain what he need. Let's say visible mending or um, mending without specific um, mending with specific patterns, which he imagined. Um, if he can summarize that his request into one word, saying sashiko, yes, that's a very convenient. That's a very good way, good cultural aspect. The point is that though the sashiko as visible mending is not something Japanese introduced. As long as I know. <laughs> if there might be some Japanese there, but at least it's not done by sashiko practitioner. I don't know any sashiko practitioner who encouraged the visible visible mending for the purpose of mending. It was more like a trend in English. There's nothing wrong. The visible mending can be a part of sashiko, don't get me wrong. It is the part of sashiko. Yet it's not the word for that. So <laughs> Susan said that was just one guy with his own crazy idea. He had no logic. That's not only him though. Um, he had enough confident to speak up on my platform with out or with re realizing the risk of writing it. Um, but there are, there are people like that. So he was more like a speakable, more like a loud audience for that matter. But there are silence audience that they would like to stick with the answers that they feel comfortable regardless of what the reality is. And because that it's it's not a white paper. Um, and then if there's a white paper, we can draw something and then we can make a beautiful something I intend to. Either simple or complex, I can draw what I want. So right now there those on the paper there are a lot of paint. And it's quite difficult. I can still try to draw what I want to draw on that paper, yet it is it sometimes required to cover those paint with the color I can use. <laughs> so what is the Japanese word for visible mending? Hoshu. <laughs> Hoshu. There is actually a field. I kakutsugi ha Help me out, some Japanese people. Visible mending, they, it's, it's it's more like invisible mending. But there are the industry, there are world, there are field, like professions 
who focused on the invisible mending. So they are worth for that. They are worth for that, but the visible mending itself is quite Western trend. It is probably happening in Japan as well. Um, but f combining with the Sashiko's idea that they had to stitch, making the mending visible was kind of the last thing they want to do. So we have a choice. We have a choice. We have a choice to replace the fabric. We have a choice to put this fabric in the trash bin. We have a choice to go to the Walmart and get a new pair of pants. Because of the choices we have, um, it is kind of, it is very well minded choice to appreciate what we have. As a result, appreciating the mending itself is understandable and it's quite trendy. It's quite neat. It's quite neat. But when it comes to the word, and the image associated to the word, um, we have to be kind of careful because if we just end up with saying like, well, the sashiko is the word to appreciate the visible mending, then all those people who use that word for different purpose, different meaning, will lose the context. <clears throat> so that is the biggest point. Sashiko can be visible mending, and we can use it for the visible mending. I do that all the time, but it's not the word for that, and by defining that such cause the visible mending, we are leaving many, many people and many people's life, belief, value behind. As long as we can carry those values with us, then we can, of course, it's the change of the culture, and the culture is supposed to change, but when we make the change, those changes, I would like to make sure to involve as many stories as possible. For that story, they did not like the mending. That's one uh, story that I can share. Kakehagi ne, kakehagi, arigatou. Kakehagi ne, kaketsugi, kakehagi. So those two words are more like invisible mending, but it's quite big profit. Not a big, but it's it's one specific profession that many people uh, are proud of. With I am, I am no near to talk about those because I don't and I am not qualified to talk about. But the word itself is kakehagi or kaketsugi. I think it depends on the place or regions that they're doing that. <laughs> My point is that if someone says sashiko is visible mending, the co correct them with the real Japanese word. There is no word. There is no such a convenient word to replace that. Because visible mending itself is the quite western trend. If they are just talking about mending, if there is if there's any like a mending or like I'm doing just mending, then you know, sure. I'm just doing mending. Then there's then if they wanna say in Japanese, sure there's a word for that, but that I don't see the point of using the Japanese word if that's what they're doing. I ah. I think it's distinction between people who wants to learn a craft as soft sort of a consumption this sorry. I will read it like <laughs> I think it's a distinction between people who want to learn a craft as sort of consumption. This week I'm learning Sashiko, next week applique compared to people who are artisans. If for that, yes. Um, sashiko, for them, is just the word that they can consume. And that's how probably culture transfer, I mean translate, not translate, transform. So. It is probably the nature of it, um, but I would like to keep speaking up. At the same time, it's not going to be as easy as drawing that on the white paper or like blank paper. 
artisans use their craft as an expression of themselves or at least bring some depth to their work yep I, I you know i i spend so much time with the artisans who well, for example my family is artisan my family <laughs> tradition we never ever made borrow pieces we hate it despise the borrow keiko my mother appreciate those cultures as well and she tries that um but it took forever for me to even touch those items we as a family we have never made that and i don't think they would like to do that even now i cannot speak on behalf of them but the borrow as the art is the trend outside of the actual japanese sashiko stitchers there are artisans or artists who decided to use the stitching technique or stitching ideas to make boro uh, but traditionally speaking those not traditionally speaking uh, those sashiko artisans who has been stitching 30 years 40 years in japan i don't think they like boro that much it's too psychologically dirty to me to us to me <laughs> Is there any stitching that the Japanese culture has been influenced by from another culture? That's a very, very, very good question. Probably a lot. <laughs> Probably a lot of them. That is a very good question. Well, quilting is... There's a Japanese quilting, and that's a big, big, big trend. Um, not a trend, a big field. But that's very much influenced by the American quilt as well as the Hawaiian quilt but I cannot speak about that because I don't really know about it at the same time I believe that there are a lot of influence from Korea or China I guess and I cannot really specify what exactly it is um, but I'm not really saying that Sashiko is purely made in Japan. It my it is the combination of some cultural influence. So the culture is supposed to change, and I'm not denying that. Um, but there's one thing that I, it's hundred percent sure is that Sashiko was a stitching practice happened in Japan. So it carries a lot of Japanese people's mindset, stories, lives. And the narrow it down, simplification of sashiko in English right now is unfortunately leaving those peoples behind. Why? Because they just didn't think about it, I guess. Because it's it's too much work to do to make it business <laughs> like if you want to let's say you want to open this sashiko store right you want to sell sashiko supplies you want to talk about sashiko you want to teach sashiko you want to make your life you want to make your business bigger like you have a, like a textile store you want to install some sashiko thread ideas teaching to make you know you to increase your sell and then the revenue if there's any good information or definition that you can jump on or any like a publication or like you know authorities that you can follow that's very very easy you don't have to invest that much time not the money time um but ideally speaking if they're going to <laughs> not ideally speaking if they are talking about changing the culture though I think it's they are supposed to be able to speak Japanese, communicate to Japanese people in the, their language, and then they can discuss about it, about the change mindfully, involving the other Japanese people. That that's the point. Um, unfortunately, the change happened in Sashiko in today's English world does not involve that many Japanese people. I happen to be involved because I happen to be able to speak English, but if I were not to be able to speak English, 
my word, all of the things I share, have shared and will share, will be lost or not buried in my brain. So that, that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why I'm doing this every Thursday, every week. Uh, that's why I make you know thousands of posts on the Instagram. But at the same time, that is the reason I say that um, it is too late to... Like if, if nobody knows the word Sashiko, it is quite easy to explain what it is. I mean, they might want to have some answers, but some of the very... Oh my gosh, there was an ad break on my so I'm sorry. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry, I used the bad word. Oopsie. Ad break, ad break. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Sashko live streaming. Oh, fuck. Hmm. So it is a bit, well, I mean, but there's nothing else we can do about it. There's nothing. There's nothing else I can do about it. But just keep talking about it. And I'm, you know, I'm okay with that. I was quite naive before. Um, but I'm okay now. I have to be mindful about it. It was your family's time, Fab Fabrice. Fab Fabrice. So yeah, there are. But it it, it is yes. I, I would say it's too late. Um, it's unfortunate, it's very unfortunate, but it is, I think, what it is. And it's gonna go back to the kind of similar topic to the last week or the two weeks before that. I sometimes really wish that I, if I were not to speak English, what would be happening right now? Like, how do they... Well... Somebody else will be doing that same thing. But... I don't know anybody else who can speak English who has been with Sashiko since 1980s or 1990s. Those who I respect, like, you know, people here as well from Japan, those who I sincerely respect who has been doing Sashiko such, such for decades, like 30, 40, 50 years, unfortunately they don't speak English to the level that they can communicate without any translator or any breaks. Uh, they can, we can communicate, they might understand what we say, but sometimes it takes a little bit of challenge for them to speak up. So... There are some Sashiko teachers and who who have, who who can speak English and then who met Sashiko after they can speak English. I am not minimizing their experience and expertise, so I don't say that their teaching is wrong. Um, but they are quite new to me. They're kind of newcomer. So they probably don't know the artisans who lived 30 years ago. So they can teach, they can illustrate the Sashiko today and then what they can learn from the documents or internet. So it's it's not a first information, first source, it's the second source, either book or somebody's story. Um, 
what I like to share is the first story. Mine is mine is one point five stories because my stories are from somebody who lived there, but it's through me. So there are a few people who I can talk to, and they I can ask their stories to be translated or somewhat spoken up. But translating is you know translating can be <laughs> hectic, and also it it takes some time to convince them to do that. And then world trend is to more like learn the technique instead of the stories. I wanna I want to be do it. I want I want to be able to do it right now, right there. I have another question if you are interested. You said on the recent live streaming that there are no such school masters to pass down the skill, hence the orderly. So how does one become a such artisan? Do they develop on their own? Meet in stitching group and share ideas? Otherwise, that's a very good question. Um, when I say Sashiko artisan, I should probably write it down somewhere to elaborate it. But it's more like the comprom. I'm compromising. There is no word to explain what I would like to say as the art. I would I would like to say Sashiko shokunin. Shokunin is the word, very very unique word we have in Japanese which can be translated as the artisan if we use the google or like dictionary um i was called sashiko artist and i even used um uh, once i used that as my title before but it made me feel uncomfortable it made me very uncomfortable to call myself artist because i'm not i don't think i am and the other people I stitch with also say that they don't feel comfortable being called artist. So I, I was looking for the word that we can describe ourselves in a nice way. And so that's why we kind of called, I call myself as the artisan. At the same time, because it's ordinary things, they are somebody very experienced, but that does not equal to the master. So I consider everybody as the artisans for that matter. <laughs> so, like, I said rising artisans, I guess. There's no clear definition for the artisan. And even for the shokunin, there's not a clear art definition. Um, if there's any common things we have is that those who sacrifice their life into one specific field, we tend to call them shokunin, but it does not have to be always like that, because the, today's world is very fast-moving. Uh, but 50 years ago, 60 years ago, the shokunin has to be very one specific field. So there's a little glitch between the, those words. So how does one become such a artisan? Do they develop their own? It usually happens in the community or the family for that matter. Like granddaughter to daughter, daughter to their daughter. No, granddaughter to mother, mother to daughter. And then communities where the family kind of commun commun communicate with each other. Therefore, there are numbers of sashiko in Japan which they respect each other without excluding. Without exclusion. It's like a family recipe for your cooking. How do you become the master of making tomato sauce? But one can be the artisan of tomatoes, making tomato sauce, I, I believe. And those recipes are something special for the family or the region. But it can be different. But there's no answers for that. But again, it has been like 60 years, 70 years. There are a lot of change in Japan as well. In Sashiko, there are a lot of changes. And there were people, there were community, there were family who tried to make this as the business. So in order to make a business, you have to have more capacity to make. 
So that kind of changed the idea of ordinary. If it's ordinary, we cannot really make it to the business. We cannot bring the money in. So they are the family who kind of destroy that ordinary part. Although within that family, someone was very much revealing that idea because I didn't like it. Well, I, I said I, but he didn't like it. But at the same time, he, you know, he, he was fed by those money. So I was privileged, but I didn't like what I got. So it's, it's, it's really, there's no one single answer for this. And even I, or not even, because we know that we cannot make one specific answer, I feel very uncomfortable when somebody else define one as the answer. The answer. If it's a answer, I don't mind. If, if it's an answer, I don't mind. But if, if the answer, then I feel very... Probably ignored. That's probably the word for that. Because they are. Um, other, they are another. Uh, if you go to Facebook, there are tons of sashiko groups where they want to share their answers. So that that's a good place to find out what the trend is, the main trend is. Um, I think social media is a, in general, social media is a good place to find what the main trend is. Again, you who are here right now are the minorities. You are very, I, I really appreciate you being here. I really appreciate you listening to my stories, my live streaming every week. And that's fantastic. Like, I cannot thank you enough for that. But it is very, you are kind of strange side. I, want, I don't want to say strange, um, but the minority. The big trend is quite easy going and they really define answers so easily. Uh, one thing I just, I just read like a few days ago. Uh, so the question in that thread was that what kind of, like, is that okay to use this specific thread, like this kind of thread? And the answer, if the question is, is that okay to use this thread? The answer is, yes, you can. It's okay. okay you know, there's no rules. There's no law to restrict that. But there was a comment saying, like, well, use whatever you have. And that, that is, that's perfectly fine. That whatever, use whatever you have is one sentence that I'm okay with. Then follow up with that, I think she wrote that, it's the spirit of Sashiko. That is not correct. It is not the spirit of Sashiko. Using what we have as the thread is not the spirit of Sashiko. Then you probably want to ask what is the spirit of Sashiko. Keep listening to my stories because I cannot just simplify the one uh, spirit. If I can, I would have done it already. What is the spirit of Sashiko? Ugh, well, appreciation to not only the material, but also what we do. But I think from their perspective, appreciating the material itself is Sashiko. It is not. It's not right. But they think it's the spirit, right? It's the part of Sashiko, but it's not a spirit of Sashiko. <laughs> we are the elite man. Oh, I don't know if elite. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, this is like the minority that I love. I appreciate your perspective. It's important for me to not culturally appropriate something. I respect the original and love being inspired. Yeah. Um. I. You know. I. As I have a video other like filmed 
talking about cultural appropriation, I don't think there is like cultural appropriation in Sashiko per se. I don't mind people using the word Sashiko. I just don't. I don't think I'll be proud of myself if I let it go like this. I cannot be proud of myself to the others who try to preserve this culture to me, to us, to this generation. Yes, yes, Sakura. And, you know, most of them are gone, including my father. They are all gone. But their stories are there. Not even stories. Their living, their life was there. And I do not want to kind of ignore those things. So yeah, I hope that it kind of makes sense about being too late. It's not too late to, for me to do anything. That, that's 100% sure. I, there's nothing for me. There's nothing too late for me to do it. Um, but it, when there's a condition to achieve it, it is too late. Wow, it's it's really hmm. I really wish that there will be more how can I explain that? I just realized I'm quite unique too for that matter. But in, in Sashiko, yes, I am unique, but at the same time um, this live streaming, sometimes I get a, a, a comments or feedback from those who do not really do Sashiko at all, who kind of enjoy the Japanese culture from the Japanese view. It is quite interesting that not, it's probably not so common to express what Japanese are in English. Well, first of all, it is very, very, very difficult. <laughs> I'm trying and trying, but it, there's no easy way to do it. Answering to the question without answering is very, very difficult. People think it's a philosophy, but it's not. It's just we have to understand that there is no answer for something. There's no word to explain some of the things. You kind of have to experience that without taking them to Japan. So, or like, I cannot explain how fish, raw fish on the rice taste like with sauce, black sauce made from soybeans. I have no word, I can. I don't think I can explain how good a small piece of rice having a completely raw fish cut from in front of you from this like a live fish in front of you. And then you have to dip that into the black sauce where you, do, where you don't know what is inside, which is salty, and it's black. Now we have the word for that. But that word, sushi, has a little bit of different image in Japan here too. So, <laughs> that's the difficulty. And not many Japanese, well... It is rare to be like craftsmen or stitchers or makers and then uh, English speaker too, I guess. It's a pure luck. <laughs> I keep saying it's a pure luck that I can speak English. I will talk about a little bit more, and I will probably do one more thread. I don't want to go that far from 10 o'clock, but sometimes I will stitch a little more. Okay, a little bit of break. Before the ad kicks in, I will just... Take a break so that Ed is not going to bother you. 
and the add my kicks in. So I'm sorry if it's the add kicks in. It should be now. It shows that it's coming. So it's now probably. After this, I will talk a little bit. So would you say that Sashiko is more than just stitching? It is. It is more than just stitching. Well, <laughs> we have to define what is stitching first, but it is a stitching. It is a stitching, but it's not a technique. It's not a skill. It's not a... I'm sorry. It's not only the technique. It's not only the design. It's not only the pattern. It's not only the skill. It's not only the production. It's it's something it's kind of name for the somebody's ordinary practice which happen to have a very specific name for that so if we define if we have to de define sashiko into one specific form and let's say sashiko is the word for technique then it will end up with simplifying a lot of um, other rich context as the result we will very much slim skim slim skim the important part of this now of course of course many people want to hear what it is after this but unfortunately i cannot give you the answer because my definition of answer is going to exclude somebody's too so i can give you my definitions when we actually when i teach teach um but i try to not to say my definition so easily because somebody might just you know use my definition as the answer and then it's gonna spread it's gonna be spread as another answer which I don't like. Although it's mine, I might not like it. So, I want to be fair. As fair as possible to others. It's, it's much, much easier for me to define what I believe in as the answer and exclude everybody else. <laughs> I'm like saying, like, well, that's wrong. Thinking about the size of rice grain is wrong. It is easy to say that. At the same time, it is also excluding others, those who may have thought about rice grain size in Japan. So, I try to not to define the answer. Mm, so, I think this is something I try to do throughout the Domestica course. So, I do have my online Sashiko class as well as the in-person workshop. Um, but those are designed to teach, teach the core in essence. So it's, it's designed for those who are very interested in the sashiko. Those who can, who really wish to learn, who can invest time and money for that. So it's not designed for those who like to kind of review what sashiko is, so what is like. Um, there was a huge gap between the trend of Sashiko and what I told, what I have been offering. But I, I cannot stop offering those core in essence because that is the core. That's the everything I would like to share. So there's a little big gap between that. And I often get a, a um, question saying, what is the recommendation to start Sashiko? Uh, I kept saying, there's nothing. I'm sorry. In, in English, there's nothing because there's a big gap here. There are a lot of books about Sashiko, how-to books. Unfortunately, they do not explain the whole picture. They define the answer so easily about one specific area. So it, it, it is not wrong, but misleading. It can be misleading. So my answer to those questions was very much saying, well, you know, there's no books, there's no publication, there's no class that I can recommend in English. You can, there are some recommendations in Japanese. Um, so domestic course was more like the answer to that. If they are interested in Sashiko, 
or if they have just heard the word about sashiko and if they want to go through what sashiko is the domestic domestic course is like a brief brief explanation of what it is so i sometimes get a really nice reviews uh, some of them are saying that i did not know about sashiko but this course domestica made me want to try more so you know he, the person was encouraged that's that's the whole purpose of the domestica course it's not something i teach it's more like to encourage that's why i don't define the answer in that class the course i'm sorry um another <laughs> review is that everybody who are willing to learn sashiko who practice sashiko who are doing sashiko already should take this course because that's another perspective of sashiko from the japanese and that's a really encouraging review because i feel like that too no matter how experienced one he or she is as long as they're doing that in english they're always space to learn i i have i have no um guts i have no <laughs> Ah, I have no, I have no power or <laughs> and guts. It's guts. I have no guts to say that in Japanese people who practice sashiko in Japan. But as long as they're practicing sashiko or teaching sashiko in English, there are there are a lot of space that they can learn. So anybody can learn something from that course because I am mentioning something nobody has mentioned before not japanese though <laughs> so th that's another good thing so i hope that that can be the bridge between trend and what i'd like to really really share by the way so this like investment the teaching core in essence uh, if you only listen to this live streaming it sounds like you have to <laughs> you have to take this course to be qualified to do this no i i would like to you to take it so it's going to support me directly but those are designed to help you directly if you would like to take a shortcut i will teach you that i will be there for you like if you want to learn how to ride a bicycle if you have a professional teacher you will be able to ride a bicycle like this without pain same as teaching and same as swimming same as driving you know you if you learn how to drive the stick without any teacher you may damage the engine in the worst case scenario but i share pretty much everything in this live streaming i don't hide anything i don't you know this is exactly what i do this is exactly what i learned how i learned so by watching this live streaming repeatedly you will get the core in essence at some point so don't don't get me wrong that um, I'm just trying to funnel you to my workshop. It's just I'm saying there's a gap between the trend and what I would like to share. What I would like to share can be learned by just watching this live streaming or this channel. I just wanted to make sure that, that there's a bridge between that. but 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 <laughs> i i don't think many those those people who take my domestic course are those who know me already or who follows me on instagram who just get to know sashiko um the other side of the spectrum there are people who don't like me because what i say is very uncomfortable sometimes very annoying because it could be it could be against their answers right when there's when when one is saying that every single engine transmission sorry every sing, every single transmission in this world is automatic if you introduce stick that's gonna be a little bit like oh okay then what is that and if the teacher who teach how to drive can only drive the automatic and if they cannot drive the shift manual standard 
they are going they will be very threatened by the fact it's just it's extreme analogy but i understand that what i share can be i don't think it's intimidating but some people call me that's intimidating so it's, it's probably true that some people think it's some people think it's intimidating. They cannot change their feeling. I don't think it's intimidating. But it's not only one or two that I receive as a feedback that it's intimidating. <laughs> so, yep, um, I hope that this live streaming, like, weekly is perfectly fine just ah the i just uploaded the short clip 15 minutes clip uh with kai the di sashiko dialogue so my instagram facebook those social media as well as this youtube is one direction uh, I, I i really appreciate your comment here at the same time it's more like i output as uh, it's that one direction I sometimes learn a lot from the comment, but it's the speed wise, uh, it's one direction. With a lot of help with Thai, I am having a lot of good conversation. Not about Sashiko culture itself, but how we can kind of make it smooth. In, 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 in other words, how can I do better? Because I'm, you know, I'm new to this culture. I, I wouldn't say new if I spent 10 years, but again. I'm kind of, I'm not native here. So I would like to those conversation dialogue might be a nice mind food. It's it's not about what Sashiko I hope that we can talk about what Sashiko is at some point. Um but it's more like this time uh, it's the thought the theme is how can we raise our voice and we can end up with saying catch twenty two, so I did not expect I wasn't expecting to talk about Catch-22 when I was talking about Sashiko Dialogue, but, you know, that's... I don't know if it's from today's episode, but I I uploaded the first part of the Dialogue 3, so... <clears throat> Actually, I wanted to do Sashiko years ago, but I couldn't. Then I found you on Domestica. I had never seen you before. I joined the live so that I would practice regularly. Thank you so much for coming. And yes, there are reasons that I'm not on the surface of I was not on the surface of the internet for a long time. And I explained that here here and there. But there are <laughs> there are reasons that I'm not I was not on the surface of the internet until 2017. There are reasons that I did not make domestic course until recently. The first contact was actually in 2019, and it took three years for us to make it. Wow. I, I have a very sincere respect to the domestic team. Uh, they didn't give up. <laughs> That's one... One big commitment. It was very difficult. My email reply was kind of demanding. Demanding not about the in, like a money or numbers. Demanding for the understanding of what Sashiko is for the person who recruited me. I think it was very... Well, she, I, th I think she liked Sashiko before. So she, it was not difficult for her to learn. But without her, I wouldn't be doing this, so... Three years. Alright, I will stop stitching after this much, so... I really appreciate you. Another one hour of great talking. And... If you have any questions, again, I, as always, today's live live uh, yeah, today's sorry live stream was pretty good because there was a very clear question that I can answer. 
I don't want to think about the <laughs> possibility of coming to the live streaming with my selfish, not selfish, with my um, not deep thinking theme of the laugh, the power, power of laughter, which is a very important topic, but it's not going to elaborate my story for one hour. So if you have any questions, concern, not a concern, question probably, a request, uh, it's always appreciated. It is always appreciated, yeah. Well, I gotta practice my pronunciation a little bit more. Recently, my daughter is becoming very critical and she's correcting my pronunciation, so... Daddy, that's not right. Okay, I know that. It's not... I think I know it. It's just my tongue doesn't move like that. My brain understands it. I think I'm doing it. But the result is not what it is. It sounds like the, you know, Sashiko in the first few hours. I understand what I'm supposed to do. I think I'm doing it, but I'm not really doing it. Well, it's like, you know, there's a little practice to connect brain, hand, and result. It requires the practice. Language is like that, pronunciation is like that. It is easy to explain how to make the sound Yet, it is very difficult to practice it, to make it happen. And it's very, very difficult to make it like a regular thing. Thank you, Shalom, for being here. Well, I'm not done yet, but, you know. I just, you know, oh, I'm going to be done soon. Okay. Okay. Oh. All right. I thank you so much for waiting for the first few minutes in the beginning. I'm sorry for the uh, camera issues. I really appreciate you coming here tonight again, and I hope that you had a good time stitching together. And next week, I will be here as well. Next week, there's nothing. So yeah, I should be here. Um, one thing I wanted you... I, one thing I really would like to clarify about today's talk is that I am not excluding anybody, including those who teach Sashiko in English too. I am just pointing out that it's not a whole point. Whole, it's not a whole picture. Um, so as long as... The answer is defined with the effect of exclusion of others. I'm fine with that. It's, I don't think it's a cultural appropriation. In the probably strict meaning, it is a cultural appropriation, but I don't say that the sashiko should be done by only Japanese. I don't think it's right. The culture should be it's not like right or wrong. I want you, I want anybody to enjoy sashiko if they're willing to learn. And that's why I'm here. Uh, my point is that I would like to share the most interesting part of Sashiko. Um, I think those who learn from me, those who kind of enjoy the rhythm of Sashiko, and those who kind of understand what the core and essence of Sashiko, if they can explain what the core and essence of Sashiko, they can really do it. Um, today, I, we had a just conversation about Sashiko with others and she explained that like core and essence of Sashiko in one sentence very briefly yet precisely and that, that's it that's exactly what it is unfortunately today Sashiko is not doing that as long as I know they're not doing it if the question is what kind of size of stitches we have to make then they're not understanding any of those core and essence Again, like rice grain size is not the answer. It, it can be, but what kind of rice are we talking about? So, 
<laughs> Every now and again, I think you a French accent from French. 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 Ah, uh, um, my wife was born in Ukraine, a USSR, and so she, I may have the kind of Russian Ukrainian accent, like a G sound, like a H sound. Like, do I sound like a lost? Oh, I cannot do that. I shouldn't be doing that too. <laughs> Oops. Um, so. The <laughs> French is the first time to hear that. Anyway, I would like to share the most important part, which is the most delicious part of this. Like, I feel like you're missing the most delicious part of the meal. Where is that? And what is going to be a good analogy? Well, I would like to use the pizza as an analogy, but there's going to be a huge discussion. Which do you like? Crust? Or the center, which do you like the best? Ah, uh, well, that's gonna be a very really big discussion too. Personally, I like crust part. So, well, like I feel like there's a lot of missing, and then that some of the missing are very, very delicious to define that as the whole. So, I hope that you will have some time to keep watching this live streaming to find that rhythm and also the coalescence. Okay, um, I hope. You will have a good night tonight, and I will see you next Thursday at the same time. Um, again, if you have any questions, if you have any requests for me to talk about about cultural part of Sashiko, uh, please leave the comments so I can follow up. All right. Um, thank you so much, and have a good night. Bye-bye.